Spread kindness this holiday season and support mental health recovery with the Recovery Center of Hamilton County Basket of Kindness. Your choice of a red or white premium forest grade poinsettia comes decorated and wrapped in their own Basket of Kindness. Each purchase of a $22 Basket of Kindness supports the Recovery Center's mission to provide hope for those struggling with mental health challenges. Now until December 12th. For more information, visit recoverycenterhc.org slash rchc store. The Recovery Center of Hamilton County thanks Northgate Greenhouses for helping to provide this season's Baskets of Kindness. Hi, welcome to Mount Health Monday. Hi, welcome to Mount Health Monday. Anyways. Welcome to Mount Health Monday. Okay, anyways. Hi, welcome to Mount Health Monday. Hi, welcome to Mount Health Monday. And welcome back to Mental Health Monday, where we discuss advocacy, resources, and ending the stigma associated with mental health. I am your host, Amanda, here at the Recovery Center of Hamilton County. And today we are going to be talking about setting boundaries, not just during the holidays, but all year round. Now let's get into what personal boundaries actually are. So by definition, personal boundaries are the limits and rules we set for ourselves within relationships. A person with healthy boundaries can say no to others when they want to, but are also comfortable opening themselves up to intimacy and close relationships. A person who always keeps others at a distance, whether emotionally, physically, or otherwise, is said to have rigid boundaries. Alternatively, someone who tends to get too involved with others has porous boundaries. Now, obviously, there are three separate types of boundaries, rigid, porous, and healthy. Rigid boundaries usually look like avoiding intimacy and close relationships, unlikely to ask for help, has few close relationships, very protective of personal information, may seem detached even with romantic partners, keeps others at a distance to avoid the possibility of rejection. Most times, people have a mix between each of the boundaries, but it really depends on the way in which your caregivers set that expectation for you. Now, porous boundaries are kind of the opposite of what rigid boundaries are. And porous boundaries look a lot like overshares personal information, difficulty saying no to the request to others, over involved with others' problems, dependent on the opinions of others, accepting of abuse or disrespect, and fears rejection if they do not comply with others. Now, these are some examples of what rigid and porous boundaries look like, but it's really important that we focus on what actually is a healthy boundary. What does that look like? So some characteristics of healthy boundaries are values own opinions, doesn't compromise values for others, shares personal information in an appropriate way, does not over or undershare, knows personal wants and needs and can communicate them, accepting when others say no to them. Now we have to put into perspective and bring awareness to the fact that boundaries look different in many different cultures. What could be a healthy boundary in your culture could look very different in somebody else's culture. So always put that into perspective when moving forward and setting your boundaries. Also, the appropriateness of these boundaries can definitely depend on context and situational. You have a different set of boundaries with family members than you do with work friends. You have a different set of boundaries with your best friends even than you do with certain family members. And it's very important to know what boundaries are in which sector of your life so you can know what you need and how to set them. Now, there are six different categories of boundaries that can potentially be violated or respected. Most oftentimes, people just think a boundary is something that needs to be set when you're feeling uncomfortable, but these types of boundaries can help you know where to set the boundary and what makes you uncomfortable specifically. So let's delve into the types of boundaries so then we can delve into how to set them appropriately. The first boundary we're gonna talk about are our physical boundaries. Physical boundaries relate to physical touch, hugs, kisses, things like that. But it can also relate to space as well. Physical boundaries may be violated when somebody touches you and you don't want them to. Somebody goes for a hug and maybe you're not comfortable. Or maybe somebody comes in and invades your personal space, your little bubble. That would be a physical boundary violation. It's really important to know what makes us uncomfortable so then we can set that specific boundary. 
there are also something called intellectual boundaries. This refers to our thoughts and ideas. Healthy intellectual boundaries look like respecting other people's opinions and their ideas. Intellectual boundaries are usually violated when somebody demeans or belittles another person's viewpoints or opinions. So it's really important for you to stay grounded in your beliefs and your thoughts and know what's okay to be talked about and what's not okay to be talked about. Now let's look at emotional boundaries. This is the one that we kind of know the most based upon how we're feeling if we're uncomfortable, if we are comfortable, checking in with our bodies and knowing what we need. Healthy emotional boundaries look like knowing when and when not to share. Healthy emotional boundaries look like limiting self-disclosure and talking about yourself. So knowing what's appropriate, what's not appropriate to share in specific situations. So gradually sharing information with a partner or a friend over the development of your relationship is an appropriate emotional boundary. Trauma dumping on someone or spilling all of your deep personal experiences to them on maybe the second or the third time hanging out or going on a date may be an emotional boundary violation. There are also sexual boundaries as well. This one is really, really important. Sexual boundaries refer to the emotional, intellectual, or physical aspects of a sexual relationship or sexuality in general. Healthy sexual boundaries include respect and mutual understanding of where the person is at. This includes respecting limitations of another's sexual desires and making sure that communication is in place. Obviously, we know that sexual boundaries can be violated when those things are stepped over and that respect is not there for another's sexual boundaries or sexuality. So any type of pressure or sexual comments or things like that could be a sexual boundary violation. There are also material boundaries, which refers to money. So respecting material boundaries looks like respecting where somebody is at financially, not pushing them to spend more than necessary. A material boundary violation looks like if somebody unintentionally or even intentionally messes up your personal possession. Last but not least, we have time boundaries. Time boundaries refer to how a person uses their time. So this can come into play a lot on the holidays, but it's definitely used year round. Healthy time boundaries look like setting aside time for each facet of your life, your work, your social life, your hobbies, etc. And time boundaries can be violated when another person asks too much of your time or you give somebody too much of your time. Now it's really important to put all of these types of boundaries into perspective when you are setting the boundary. Now let's talk about what setting a boundary actually looks like. Setting a boundary is not about correcting another person's behavior. Oftentimes we think setting a boundary is about controlling another person when it's actually not. It's about controlling our reactions and controlling the environment that we tolerate. This is adjusting what you will not tolerate and putting yourself into perspective and your actions and your reactions. Now, if you wanna understand more about your needs and how to set boundaries and what boundaries really look like, so kind of this video long form, uh, there's a really, really helpful book that helped me in my recovery journey. It's called the Set Boundaries Workbook. We'll link it down in the comments. It's actually really, really helpful for knowing what you need in a boundary, what boundaries look like for you, what's uncomfortable for you, what is comfortable for you, just to give you a guide on how to move forward because boundaries are extremely, extremely difficult. We know this, they're hard to set, they're hard to maintain, and they're hard to keep, especially if you're a chronic people pleaser like myself. And that's all for our episode on boundaries. Join us next time on Mental Health Monday and have a great, great day. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe.